Welcome, everyone. My name is Lauren Leahy. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Columbus Academy. Um, thank you for joining us for this is our last Zoom at noon. And we're focusing on a very popular topic that comes up on many of my conversations with parents um, on tours and in phone calls about math. Um, John Warnon, who is our Director of Admissions, can't be here with us um, this morning, but I know that this is a very passionate topic of his as well. So he sends, he sends his best and you can reach out to him too with questions. But I will go ahead and introduce these three um, lovely teachers that we have here today. Um, first here is um, Katie Castle, who is our math department chair and also a teacher in our middle school. Emily Dennett, who's um, the upper school um, math curriculum coordinator, also teaches in the upper school. And Donna Sade, who is our lower school uh, math curriculum coordinator and our third grade teacher, one of our third grade teachers. I will let the three of them sort of give you a little bit more background about what they do here specifically, and then we will get started. Ladies. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. So yeah. like Lauren said, I'm Katie Castle. Um, this is my 10th year at Academy um, and 10th year teaching sixth grade math. Um, I like to call this place teacher heaven. Our students are phenomenal. Our faculty and community is phenomenal. Um, and I get the pleasure of not only teaching in the middle school, but getting to kind of oversee the math program all the way from the explorers up to our 12th grade um, and get to kind of be involved in those conversations about how our littlest kids are learning how to count all the way up to how our oldest kids are figuring out what math they need for what college and what um, math makes the most sense for them. So um, I get to have a lot of fun with math all day long. Um, I'm Emily Dennett, and I teach um, currently calculus and computer science in the upper school. Um, and as curriculum coordinator, I help um, work really closely with Katie, um, but help guide our curriculum in the upper school. Hey, hi, I'm Donna Sade. I teach third grade. I'm also the lower school curriculum coordinator for math. Um, this is my 19th year at CA mm -hmm. and over teaching for over 30 years, um, pre-K through fifth grade. I um, work closely with these ladies um, in coordinating all things math, um, cross-divisional, and um, and throughout pre-K, or actually explorers, three-year-old through fifth grade. Great. Thank you. Well, um, why don't we start with a little <laughs> bit about each division, um, lower, middle, and upper, about sort of what the approach is for math and and um, we'll start there. So maybe we'll start sure. Donna with lower school. Sure. Uh, we have three-year-olds. So um, three-year-olds through fifth grade in the lower school. The three-year-olds, they're known as the explorers and that's what they do for math. They explore. Um, they are outside in nature a lot. So they're exploring with um, uh, patterns in nature um, throughout the day. They're sorting. And that's really where we begin the sense of number in our youngest is through exploration and um, just sorting spatial reasoning. Um, Pre-K kind of follows suit in that respect. Um, they're doing a lot of exploring with number sense. We'd like to get them uh, with a really good foundational number sense as they work their way and progress through lower school. And what that means basically is just understanding what number is, um, things like one-to-one -one correspondence, um, being able to count, identify numbers. So really those are the things that they concentrate on in the um, in, uh, three-year-olds pre-K and through kindergarten. In kindergarten, we start um, with our math program that we adopted a few years ago called Advisions Math. And in that respect, they work on specific strands that are coordinated with state standards. And those are um, strands like operations and algebra, numbers, um, concepts and counting, numbers and computation, geometry, including shapes, and measurement and data, which includes time. So those strands run through the lower school, and we teach those strands within the program Envisions Math. Great. We talk a little bit about the new sort of initiative of Math Journal. Yes, yes. A little bit this year. Yep. Uh, um, our new um, curriculum um, program director, Gabriel Painter, is was instrumental this year in bringing us um, problem solving through math journals. And I brought a quick sample, which 
um, takes actually envisions the envisions math program is very problem based so students are using all of their prior knowledge and applying them to um, real life problems and solving them with um, you know with each other with small groups sometimes individually so we start each through from pre-k through grade five we start each math lesson or each day with a math journal and each child is given a math task um, open-ended math task which asks them to think about a situation and then they on their own they um, come up with methods in which to solve the problem and while they're finishing up they they do some explaining of their thinking, what they use to actually um, accomplish, what methods they use to accomplish problem solving. Um, and each, each time a problem is solved, we wait, um, a student comes up and gives their, um, shares their method. Um, one, or two prob one or two students um, also come up and share their method. Then we talk about how, uh, how they came to their methods, how they came to the conclusions. And so they explain their thinking in words, which um, usually is, you know, anywhere from a few sentences to a paragraph. And then students um, and teacher come up with either new thinking um, or big idea and new, new thinking, new learning for the day, for the lesson. And then they reflect on what they did, um, how they used, how, they, how their methods was, were utilized, what they, did they make any mistakes and how did they fix their mistakes, um, which we, we do celebrate mistakes. So it's a great way to, to explain their thinking, to problem solve, and to learn from each other within the journal. And then from there, we begin our, our lesson based on uh, the new learning of the day. So that takes place um, whole class, small group, and then students are usually working on a, um, on a problem or they're working in small groups, um, centers with manipulatives. Mm -hmm. I think that the one thing I've seen too with math journals, so I have a daughter in third grade, and um, and I know Katie will probably talk about this too a little bit about, about math, being a math person and building that confidence in math. And so I've seen her sort of flourish in that confidence piece, um, which is great to see from the writing aspect. So um, that's that's just kind of my personal. Yes, these have been instrumental yeah. in um, in having kids verbalize and and talk about problem solving because basically that's what we want to do. It's what mm -hmm. it, employers want. They want eventually want students or <laughs> workers or employees who can problem solve within a group and, you know, come up with strategic thinking, um, you know, to, to help out not just themselves, but um, a group of, of employees. So, yeah. yeah, maybe we can segue that into middle school Perfect. and sort of talk about yeah. kind of the journey from there. Um, well, just to say the middle school math department could not be more excited about the journaling that's happening in lower school. Um, you know, our goals in middle school really are to get kids thinking problem solving, building those critical thinking skills, communicating about math. Um, it's rarely a very quiet environment in a middle school math classroom. There's a lot of talking, a lot of um, engaging activities. Um, and we are just thrilled that the lower school is doing the same thing because now as the kids come up, they're just gonna have a lot of those skills already within them and we can just continue to capitalize on that. Um, the middle school really is a place where we try and get kids um, doing a lot of activities with math, a lot less sitting, listening, hearing a teacher do math. I always say that if I'm working harder than the kids are, that's a problem. So they're the ones that should be doing the work. Um, our sixth grade course is a fully differentiated course um, where students are given um, experiences in all of the pre-algebra skills. Um, in seventh grade, we do have two courses. We have algebra for those that are displaying algebra readiness. Um, and then the second half of pre-algebra, which is where the majority of our students will go. Um, and then in the eighth grade, um, we have our algebra course, we have a geometry course, and we also have um, a fairly new course that was developed a couple years ago called Integrated Algebra and Geometry. Um, really excited about that class. It's a, um, a two-year course that starts in eighth grade, it ends in ninth grade when they get to um, high school. Um, but that is a course that blends algebra and geometry. So for students who are more visual thinkers, who maybe aren't quite ready to approach some of those quadratic and factoring topics in algebra as an eighth grader, we save those for ninth, but they hit the geometry earlier, um, which is something that our program has worked towards to make sure that all of our students are getting to algebra two by the 10th grade 
at the latest. Mm -hmm. We do have some kids that get there earlier. Um, and the way that we kind of just build up that enthusiasm and excitement for math in the middle school are through projects. We have um, a new initiative this year where we took over one of our bulletin boards in the middle school right now. It has a bunch of different teachers and students that maybe um, our middle schoolers wouldn't think of as the traditional math people around the school, but they're in little frames that say, I am a math person. Um, just trying to get our kids to recognize that we are all math people, everyone can do math, um, and we are all math thinkers. Um, and I'll share a little more about projects mm -hmm. later, I'm sure yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. We can head mm -hmm. to the upper school. Yeah, great, yeah, so um, the upper school, I mean, I work with an amazing set of colleagues who are all really excited about math, and we get to build on all the fine work um, that lower school and middle school is doing. And we have a lot of the same goals, right? So we want students to be problem solving. We want them to be talking about it. We want them to be gaining not only the mathematical skills, but also confidence for them to go on. Um, so Katie kind of alluded to how students will be entering the upper school at different places based on what's right for them and where they are. Um, so some students come in and they take that integrated um, algebra and geometry course, and we're making sure they're getting all the geometry that they need for their college applications, even though as a freshman, that's several years away. Um, some students are coming into geometry, and next year we'll have um, one ninth grade geometry course that much like Katie's sixth grade course will be fully differentiated. And so those students who um, need challenges or those students who need a little more support, and sometimes it might be a student needs a challenge in one sub one topic and support in another, um, but they can really start that um, high school experience um, off really well. Um, and then some students are coming in at the algebra two level and algebra two is where we first start um, having different um, advanced or standard levels of algebra two. We also have a special course for those students who um, live breathe, sleep, math, <laughs> um, called Honors Pre-Calculus and Algebra 2. That's both Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus in one year. It's obviously a very fast course, um, but it's for those students who want to go fast and go deep at the same time. Um, we never want to have a student who's just flying through um, without really building that conceptual understanding. Um, after Algebra 2, again, we have two levels of Pre-Calculus, um, a standard and advanced um, and then we go into what are typically junior, senior level courses um, that involve calculus. Um, we have um, an advanced calculus for students who are interested in calculus, but maybe not wanting to take on an AP course. We have honors calculus one, which covers the AP calculus AB, which is typically one semester of college calculus. Um, and then we have honors calc one and two that much like that honors pre-calculus class I just spoke about, it's kind of two years in one. Um, so it's calculus BC that covers two semesters of calculus in that year. Um, students who take honors calc one their junior year can take a second calculus to um, their senior year. And then for seniors who um, maybe aren't thinking about going into the STEM fields, have other interests, or maybe are but want to take more math, um, we have statistics courses, um, both in advanced statistics and an honors calculus-based statistics for those students who want to learn, uh, kind of combine their calculus and their statistics skills. Um, we have a relatively new course called quantitative reasoning that really helps students connect mathematics to understanding the world. So, um, and very um, project-based and things that you would see, you know, they're looking at car loans and based on the interest rate or the type of car or the insurance you need, um, what kind of decisions should you be making based upon the data? Um, you know, we have some students who have taken that um, honors calculus, or sorry, honors pre-calculus course as freshmen. They take calc one and two as sophomores. Um, they take honors calculus-based statistics as juniors, and they could be taking a multivariable calculus course, which is on um, <laughs> often known as calc three in college. Um, their senior year and that we're so lucky that we have Dr. Scott Linder who you know teaches at both Ohio Wesleyan and here at Academy. Um, so those students who have just um, really excelled and loved math the whole time, they can be taking classes that math majors in college would be taking um, here at Academy. Um, along with all of those courses, <laughs> these are so much, um, many of them involve projects much like we talked about in the middle school um, and you know, 
you might picture if you just picture a math class you might think of rows and desks and rows and the teacher up there talking um, but we want to use the good pedagogy that our lower school and middle school teachers use um, and so we often have students working in small groups or are up at the boards trying things with the teachers coming and asking them questions to help move them along um, of course there is some direct instruction um, at different times um, but even in our you know advanced honors levels courses or students are working toward APs they're also doing projects and my favorite projects are ones that connect us to um, our bigger community. You know, we've had students use their um, knowledge of graphing functions to create coloring book pages that they take to the lower schoolers. Um, I know Katie works in the sixth grade along with um, the, one of the calculus classes and they make some, I won't step on your Yeah, let me jump much. in. Yeah, actually, Donna was just in my class and we were literally just wrapping it up with one of the classes. Um, our sixth graders design a cross section of a bowl or a vase. Um, I send those cross sections, those two dimensional pictures to Dan Alexio, who teaches one of our AP calculus courses. Um, and I send it to our makerspace where Todd Martin and Luke Howard help me. And from the makerspace, they rotate that image and 3D print a bowl for us. Mm -hmm. In the calculus classes, they rotate that image on a coordinate plane. Um, they use integral and the disk method and figure out the volume. And then we take our bowls and in sixth grade use knowledge of density that they learned in science. Um, we pour water into the bowls, we measure how much water they are, and then we compare to see which group got closest. Um, this year, we had one group get within a hundredth of a milliliter. Wow. wow. Crazy. So um, they're super excited about that. Um, the calculus students, depending on schedules, either make videos for us or come and visit explaining their process. And it's just really fun to have sixth graders recognize, oh, I have no idea what that means, but I know what a variable is, or I have no idea what that symbol is, but that's a coefficient. And they start making those connections and seeing, hey, that could be me in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's really cool mm -hmm. cross-curricular. Yeah. yeah. Cross-divisional. Yeah. And it's yeah, great. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yes. I think that, that <clears throat> that's a wonderful example of that cross-divisional, um, you know, project. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And I know there are some other projects that take place, whether they're cross divisionally or in each division. So um, if there's any ones in particular you want to share, I'm sure people would love to hear yeah. about those. I can and talk a quick one. one. Yeah. Um, we're trying to, we've, we've taken on a lot of new initiatives lately. So we're trying to um, eventually get uh, to use a little bit more of project-based learning. Um, this, just this past month, third grade, um, we're also kind of revamping some of the assessments as well um, <clears throat> to have them align more with our journals and problem solving. So instead of, um, we just finished a, a topic or a, a chapter on um, data and measurement. So instead of an assessment, what we had the students do is create a survey, a survey question based on something that's meaningful to them, <clears throat> excuse me. And then uh, they surveyed their classmates um, made a, a, um, a, a table and took the information and data in the table and created um, both a picture graph and a bar graph that they shared with, with each other. So that's so much more meaningful mm -hmm. than answering questions about, you know, this data that you're looking at. So that's the kind of, um, the kind of assessment and projects ideas that we'd like to do more of eventually. And they were very excited. I came in yes. on a tour during Elizabeth Sinclair's class and they were interviewing and it was fun to see that each other questions and right. football team do like better and very you know football. yeah, it was, yeah. More, it was you could see they were very engaged in the actual project mm -hmm. itself, as you said so yeah so the yeah. projects are really engaging and powerful mm -hmm. for them yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in middle school um really we try and just use projects as a way first of all just to connect our kids to something else whether it's to the calculus students to another um department or even just to the greater community. So I know Michelle Platt does math projects that relate to our Kids for Kids mm -hmm. food drive, um, and they do a lot of calculations um, about the food and food deserts, and they look into data on that. Um, the other piece for me that projects do is it's a really great way to differentiate and meet kids where they are, um, especially if kids are taking the lead and exploring things that they are interested in. It's a really nice way to let one kid get a little extra help on a topic if they need it, Whereas one other student might be ready to be pushed a little bit in that topic. 
um, two big projects that we do in sixth grade. Um, one is our basketball unit where we partner with our varsity basketball teams and become their statisticians. Um, it's something that the kids look forward to all year. They're also interviewing those players and writing articles about them in language arts. So it's a way for us to connect both to our high school friends, but also to our language arts classes. Um, on our end, we're doing mean, median, mode, and range, calculating percentages, looking at different ways to display data. Um, and again, it's just so much more meaningful than having a silent test for an hour that the kids are sitting doing. Um, and then finally, um, our entire last quarter is a huge unit um, that leads up to our business mm -hmm. fair, where um, our sixth graders apply for jobs. They hopefully get one. <laughs> they um, calculate how much money they're going to make, including taking out their taxes, and they get very, very angry about that. <laughs> um, but that's a ton of percentage work. Um, that's difficult. It's way more difficult than what typical sixth graders can do, but they push themselves and they get themselves there because they really want to know how much money they're mm -hmm. going to make. Right. Um, and so they pay their bills. We do a bunch of calculations with that. And at the same time, they're creating something to quote unquote sell at our business fair. So they're doing all that business math. They're going to a Shark Tank event. Um, it's a pretty big thing in our sixth grade world. We get really excited about it. Um, and we utilize that as a way to not only review percentages, but also to look at functions. So our students are also graphing the daily balance in their bank account. Um, and so it's a real easy way to talk about the difference between a positive and a negative slope. It's a real easy way to talk about what it means if that line has dropped below the x-axis. Um, that's a rough day in their bank account world. Um, I mean, and they're playing around with piecewise functions. And so they are, when they realize that, they're like, oh, look at us go. Um, so I have, I have so much fun with our projects in sixth grade. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah and the upper school um, projects can go from, you know, in geometry, I know they've been out there um, using right triangle trig to measure the heights of buildings, or they'll pick a building on campus and try to figure out the volume of that building. Um, we've done projects, you know, throughout several courses, one of my favorites um, it's been done in both Algebra 2 and Calculus, where students, to review um, kind of the year, create an ABC book of all the topics. So they come up with um, kind of a, a topic from the class that fits every letter. So maybe it's area or quadratic or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then small groups of students work to put together a sheet that reviews that topic, gives kind of a sample problem on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, so advanced calculus did this last year and there have been students who have returned from college who said they asked their mom to find it in their room and mail it to them um, so that they would have it in their <laughs> college class as something. So, you know, the students created something that the students found valuable um, as they left, which I think is just wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and I want to make sure we stay in time because I want to leave an opportunity for questions, which you are welcome to type questions in the chat function. And um, Anika Latell, who helps us in the admissions office, um, she'll help manage those questions. But um, before we get to that, could each of you touch upon homework a little bit and sort of what the expectation on homework, um, especially I think in the lower school, that comes up a lot too. Sure. What, and if a child is struggling with math homework, what's the best course for a parent to maybe um, support a child? We, um, in lower school, um, the math piece uh, specifically, I, I know in first grade, I do believe that's when they start um, homework in general, mm -hmm. and they have a choice board. So there's a sort of like a bingo card that comes home, and they're able to just choose, um, I think, a few a different uh, projects or activities throughout the week, uh, math-related, language arts-related. And then in second grade, <clears throat> Um, the expectation is, I believe, 10 minutes of math, maybe. And usually it's taken a, a page taken from their um, their workbooks, Envision's workbook. We've scaled down considerably this year um, on homework. Mm -hmm. So um, in third grade, we uh, I, we only give homework in math probably two or three times a week, depending upon what we're giving for spelling. Um, and in, in other curriculum areas. So it's it's been about 10, 10 to 20 minutes, and it's usually a review yeah. of what we've been learning um, a couple times a week. Fourth and fifth grade, um, I do believe fourth grade gives nightly homework. Is that right? Maybe because I know you're a parent, right? And then fifth grade, I think, follows suit in, in that they're reviewing um, information and, and 
um, concepts that they they just learned. Mm -hmm. um, if a parent is having difficult or a student is having difficulty with with homework, they really shouldn't because it should be a review mm -hmm. um, and something that they can do independently. Um, and also we have um, a host homework club <laughs> three times a week um, after school. So th that's an option for students who go to case. They can come to homework club Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, and I, I can yeah. work with them one-on-one -on -one to give them extra help as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, in the middle school, um, our whole middle school department is of the belief that less is more that there is no need for you to do 30 of the same type of problem over and over and over again. So you're going to see shorter homework assignments, but perhaps an element of needing to explain or an element of um, maybe find the mistake in this problem rather than um, just do these 20 problems. Um, actually, my students are always really upset when I give them a homework assignment with one problem because they know <laughs> there's going to be a lot of thinking that needs to go into that one. Um, but um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's nightly. It's frequent, but not nightly. We do not want them, I always say, don't be a puddle of tears in your kitchen. If you're struggling, you send us an email, you let us know we're here to help. Um, the middle school has flex periods where kids can come and ask questions um, about their homework. Um, but really, to me, homework is just a place for kids to get a little bit of practice, try some things out on their own, see if things are clicking or not. Um, homework will never in the middle school be graded for accuracy. We want it to be a risk-free environment for them to do their best on something, try, um, and then get some help with it if they need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, additionally, I will say that there are some times that homework looks different for different students. So again, as our, our whole department is really just about making sure kids get what they need and what's best for them at the moment. Um, so I might have a student that needs a little bit more practice with adding fractions. And then I have a student that remembers that perfectly. They're ready to look at something a little bit different um, or they're ready to look at adding fractions in a different way. Um, and so homework assignments can look different um, day to day for different students. Sure, yeah, and once again, um... It's not fair that I always go last. You know, like that's <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so we're building on all the good work. You know, I think our department believes in quality over quantity. Um, our upper school classes meet four times out of every six class days. So again, it's not every single night because you don't have that class every single day. Um, but in general, the homework is either um, not part of the grade, again, just for practice um, and very low stakes, or very a very small percentage of the grade. Um, you know, for many classes, um, the homework is posted along with an answer key because we really want to build those study skills as they go off to college and kind of that self-directed learning so they can try it and then they can check it. And the best stuff happens when they come in and ask questions. Um, so, you know, we've got a really wonderful schedule that um, when if a student is struggling um, and they're not able, you know, I hear so many students that are FaceTiming with each other, which I think is just fabulous that they're um, using each other as, you know, positive resources. Um, but you can also encourage your your student to, you know, email their teacher and find out um, most of the teachers are available. The the shorter blocks before or after lunch and the rooms are filled with students at tables asking questions um, or just asking for like, hey, this was really cool, but what happens if I do this? Um, and, you know, I love our department because those are always welcomed with like, oh my gosh, that's such a cool idea. How can we expand on that? Wonderful. Well, we do have a question. Um, the question is, um, two questions. Someone would like additional samples of group-based assignments that apply to real life and, um, and then the other question we'll get to after that. So maybe more. And I think you guys briefly touched too on, you know, sometimes you work with the makerspace and sometimes you work with language arts. And so there's sometimes we didn't really necessarily talk about coding too as, as a kind of other sort of element of it. But um, yes, other examples of um, group-based assignments that apply to real life. Um, I can say today my students started, um, I call it like a little partner math check where they're working together um, we are finishing up a short unit on probability. Um, and so one of the problems is having them um, explore how many different outfits can be made based on a certain number of pants and jackets and hats. Um, some of them, the questions in there are design your own um, situation that would create a probability of three fourths. One of them is design a situation where there are two dependent events that have a specific probability. 
Um, and so, I mean, that relates to carnival games, that relates mm -hmm. again to outfits, um, but they're working on it together. And that is in place of a traditional test mm -hmm. on this unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of the um, projects I know Advanced Calculus has done recently is looking at oil consumption over um, many decades. And so they used real life data um, or historical data um, and graph trend lines and then um, used integration um, to find out how many barrels had been used. Um, and that connected, they talked about, you know, there was a dip in oil consumption here, what was going on historically there, which was kind of nice cross-curricular. Um, Toward the end of calculus, um, we've done um, kind of calculus classes coming together, and it's not really real life, but um, we had students create um, an escape room. Um, and so, you know, block one created an escape room for block three, block three created an escape room for another block. Um, and so they were putting all these things, but the great thing is the students wanted to make them themed because when you go to an escape room, you know, they have some theme. And so once one group uh, chose under the sea. And so they were looking, you know, they were deciding how does calculus relate to um, sea life. And so that was really cool. Nice. Okay. For, for lower school, we're, we were mostly working in um, math centers or stations. So it's, it's maybe uh, partner work or um, a game where there's problem solving and they're taking turns. So things like that. Mm -hmm. So not, not necessarily as project based quite yet. But they're they're still learning how to work together and how to manage small group and and taking on roles. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, I know we're getting short on time, so I, I think we have time for maybe one more question. And these two kind of I think we can answer both of these questions at the same time. So one question is, how do you use or um, assessment data to help students move between grade levels or difficulty levels, and how do you support students who are coming into the school from a traditional math, more traditional? Um, school math program. Yeah, um, I can speak in sixth grade. Um, we we tend to get it's the beginning of middle school. We get a little crew of mm -hmm. new students coming in, and whether it's a group of new students or to me, they're all new to the middle school. Mm -hmm. um, we do start out early on in the year with some more um, traditional pretests, just for me to get a sense of kind of what our students are knowing. Um, as the year goes on, as I know students more, pretests can look more like let's have a class discussion and I can pick up data on what students are needing at that point. Um, but I just kind of, again, take a look at what the students are coming in with, make sure that if there are any holes, we're filling them in. We have incredibly nice class sizes, which really helps with that. Um, our students, we have a one-to-one -one iPad program, which means from the click of a button, I can send these three students one assignment mm -hmm. that they can work on. I can send these three students another assignment. And then if that one feels too challenging or too much, I can easily switch that up to make sure I'm meeting them where they are. Um, and I don't know if it's okay to share a quick example. Um, within our um, percentage unit this year, we were working with our basketball um, teams and we were doing percent. We were talking about discounts and markup. We were talking about just basic percent problems. Um, and as a challenge, I threw out a problem where somebody was use, utilizing five different coupons, um, all 20% off. And that was a real challenge for some of our students. And they played around with it. Some kids were able to get there. Um, it was open for everyone to try. Um, not everyone was able to make a whole lot of progress. Some kids were able to make a lot of progress, but it took them a long time. Other kids were able to derive formulas for decay that enabled them to get there in one step. And so kind of the same problem, same content, but approached in different ways, allowing kids to stretch and get that challenge that they need, while also allowing kids that aren't quite ready for that level to push themselves in other ways. Nice. Tiered in yeah, a way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the upper school, we also have a lot of students who join either in ninth grade or mm -hmm. Um, maybe just finally hit their stride, right? Mm -hmm. And so we never want to feel like a student is locked into something, um, either locked into advanced if they didn't then decide they have a passion somewhere else and, you know, want to take the standard class and have time, you know, somewhere else, or have been a standard math student and really want, you know, something's been ignited and they want to push themselves. Um, so we look at a lot of different things, you know, again, with our small class sizes, teachers get to know students really well individually and, you know, a lot of conversations and, you know, data, assessment data throughout the year. Um, and then, um, so for students coming in, we give them a placement test. 
um, and we, you know, re respond to them with, here's what you did well, here's what you didn't do well. I mean, based on this and your prior transcripts, what, what class do we think um, is best for you? And, and any student who, um, you know, has been in the standard level and wants to take advanced and just, you know, maybe their teacher isn't quite sure we have an appeals process for students to show us what they know and to have a conversation about, here's where your strengths are, here's where um, any weaknesses might be, and how can we help you achieve your goals? And in lower school, we pretest um, before each topic, which is um, an, another word for chapter. We usually pretest depending upon the content, and from there, we um, you know, we may remediate if we need to or differentiate in other ways if, if we have advanced students, but we differentiate more horizontally rather than vertically. So instead of giving um, a student advanced for the next grade level, we give them a sort of like Katie explained a tiered um, tiered work or and or homework to work on within their their set skill so so that they can thrive in the classroom. Great, wonderful. Well, I know that we're going to wrap up here because you all have classes to get to, but thank you so much. And um, I suppose if anybody's watching that has additional questions, you can reach out to the admissions office and we can be in touch or put you in touch with um, the right person. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, you so much, you. ladies.